Helmet, check. Red Bull, check. The hundred other pieces of camera equipment that I use, check. Paramotor, oh no. Oh shoot, all right, let's keep going. Gas can, check. Okay guys, I just got everything packed up. It is currently, it's currently 7.30 in the morning. Weather doesn't look great, but I'm still gonna send it. It was projected to be like two miles an hour. Beautiful, perfect, crystal clear morning. I get down here, it's gusting like 10 to 20 miles an hour, which is not ideal. So let's see what I can get. Ooh, look at what we have here, boys. Okay, so a cool thing that we've got is this bag right here. I have it full of foam, so it can carry this stick. But this bag can fit a ton of freaking stuff in it. As you can see, boom. I've got these in stock. If you own a flat top and want one, let me know. Okay guys, I wanted to come up here, enjoy my Red Bull, and talk about what happens if your motor dies while you're flying. Because you'd be surprised how many people ask me. And let me tell you, that thing. <laughs> if the motor dies while you're flying, you just glide to the ground and land as if the motor was off. Now, there is something super important to keep in mind at all times while you're flying. And that very thing is what happens if your motor dies when you're like foot dragging water, or diving around, or at the bottom of a canyon, or maybe, you know, you're only 10 feet off the ground. What happens if your motor dies then? And one general rule that we all follow is always be looking for your landing site. Always be looking for your landing site. No matter what I'm doing, no matter where I am, no matter how high I am, no matter what glider size I'm on, I am always, always, always looking for where I would land if my motor is to die. Now, sometimes you take, you know, ex more extreme risks. You have higher risk and your foot drag in the water, you know, 10 feet out or you're diving around in a place where if you had to land, it wouldn't be desirable. And that's all up to the pilot's choice. How, wh what are you willing to take the risk on? How much risk are you willing to take? Ideally, at all times, you would fly in a way where if your motor dies, you have a place to land. Ideally, you always have a really nice place to land. That's not always the case. Sometimes you don't, and that's a risk you have to be willing to take. But if you're a new pilot and you're watching this, always fly with a landing site in mind. Now, it is bumpy as can be. I knew it was gonna be a little wild, but I did not expect it to be this wild. Whoa, ooh, baby. We fucking and Bronco in bay. Whoa, we shaking and baking. <laughs> See, like right now, if my motor just goes whoop, what am I gonna do? I've already got a landing site picked out. I have a giant freaking field right next to me. I'm just gonna slowly come down, pick a nice soft spot over there, glide myself in as close to the road as possible so that I don't have to worry about walking. Because who wants to freaking walk these days? That's so old school. Here I go, then we would point into the wind and I would just bring her on down in this nice field that I have right here. So see, that's what you do. If you're flying, always fly with a landing spot in mind. I've got a big one. But let's, let's change up the situation, right? Let's go fly like we're diving around over here. I'll try and keep the motor at low idle. I gotta get a different helmet set up or something. But let's pretend I'm flying over here, right? Low off the ground, diving around these trees. That's a risk I have to be willing to take because there's situations where if my motor dies, I ain't gonna be a happy camper, you know? 
Alright, let's see, let's see. I don't want to do too much because the weather is not great. We never really do too much diving around. Here. Right here, if my motor dies, I'm landing in a freaking tree. There ain't much I can do about it. Right here, if my motor dies, I'm landing on that little dirt and hoping not to set the glider down in the water. Honestly, I think I could land right here right now. I have so much wind. And it's smooth. Do I set her down? I'm setting her down, dude. This is dumb. I love it. All about silly things. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. That's a good time. I need to, there's one piece I'm missing for this camera setup right here. There's one piece, and as soon as I get that, then it won't be moving around so much. Uh, but like right here, see I could land, if I if I make it, oh, 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 and I could set her down right here. It would not be fun, but I could set her down. Always have a landing site in mind. Now oftentimes when we're diving around, you know, not when I dive this way, because there isn't much room for me to go. I'd have to land in that shallow water. But if I dive this way, usually I have enough energy woo, that I could carry it over and set her down. Oh, hey, construction workers. What's good, broskies? Dude, I literally landed on a freaking... <laughs> I landed on a little tiny sandbar on Utah Lake. What a freaking cool thing to do. What a freaking cool thing to do. Right here. If it shuts off, I've got just enough energy to glide it in and set it down. And scrape the top of the tree, baby. Right here, I would have to set it down right at the edge of the water. It would not be a desirable landing, but it could be done. And like right now, see this right here, this is relatively safe because if the motor dies, I'm basically on shore. And, and this lake does not get deep for hundreds of feet out. I mean, the deepest this lake gets is 14 feet. But that being said, if I was flying out here, just like cruising around out here, this is stupid. This is stupid because I don't know exactly how deep it is below me. The risk of a motor out is there. If I go down right here, I might go onto my face. I've got a quick release harness. I'll get out in six seconds, but still it's dumb. Now, like right here, where I'm not that far away from shore, it's less dumb. Over here, where I'm super close to shore, like this isn't really dumb. I could set her down right here. If you guys watch me like foot drag water or Dell foot drag water, anyone that's some experienced foot drag water, it's always right on the edge of the shoreline because that's where it is safer. Ooh, ooh, we get, ooh, we get rock, baby. Oh shoot, little thermal diving it around. Oh, I love clipping the top of trees. <laughs> Right over the tree, baby. Right over the tree. Hey, the weather's conditions are really kind of smooth up. Sometimes higher is smooth, sometimes lower is smooth. And water tends to give you smoother air too. See, look at this. Tell me that doesn't just look beautiful to dive around. Also, last time I was here, these houses were not here. And that was only like two weeks ago. They are building like crazy out here in Utah. You're looking for a new home that's cheap, you're not gonna find one here. I think that is, I'm not really diving around. I don't wanna push the limits too much on a bumpy day. When it's smooth, I'll take a good dive. But when it's not smooth, no bueno. No bueno. Calculated risks, everybody. I saw this form for this post on the Facebook form about risk, about people doing stupid things. It's about calculated risk, asking yourself what you actually can handle, what's stupid, what's not, where your failure is, what the cost of failure is gonna be in that situation. If I try to do a wingtip drag right now in horrible weather conditions, the risk is extremely high. I could just get dumped into the ground because of a sinking air. The reward, 
not that high. Now the reward for a wingtip drag in general is never really all that high, but in smooth conditions, with someone who's done it a hundred times, thousand times, ten thousand times, the risk is little. Obviously the smaller the glider size, the higher the risk becomes, the smaller the reward becomes. Hey look, hey good morning sir, how you doing? One thing a paramotor does, man. It makes you a freaking celebrity, baby. Dude, I'm having too much fun now. I don't want to land. I don't want to land. I don't want to land. I didn't bring that much gas, though, did I? I was being lazy. Woo-wee! Oh, we diving. Oh, shnikey. Oh, shnikey. Oh, we having a good time. see that y'all see that sinking air right there that was a good time well do I send it boys do I drink the Red Bull everybody with a flat top watch this move look oh I can see my gas tank yeah, I think this is this is smooth enough I'm gonna crack it open boys oh baby oh baby Hold one for the boys, am I right? Thank you, thank you, oh, whoa! <laughs> we rocking around like a Christmas tree, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, man. Sponsor me, Red Bull. Success! My opinion on the summertime edition, eh, it ain't the winner, but it's it's decent. Oh shit, you know what I can say. Hey, 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 quit. Hey, take it easy for a minute. Hey, 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 hey. Special request, weather. Please, please take oh my god. I, I said, please take it easy. It was smoother back there anyways. The smoother weather was back there. I'll go back. I'll just chill with the Red Bull in my hand. It's no big deal. I ain't about to drop it. Oh, I bring my booty out here and find it. Ooh, 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 ooh. One, one big thing, boys, that I do remember that I should mention. Flying downwind, talking about motorettes, flying downwind. If you're flying low to the ground, downwind, and your motor dies, you will be landing downwind. So what I mean is climb up when you decide to fly downwind. It is not smart to fly low downwind. That's a big no, no, boys. calculated risk you have to ask yourself if you're willing to take. The reward is not that much greater if you're flying low to the ground. You know, downwind, you're going to be cruising really fast, which is cool and all, yada, yada, yada. But the risk of a motor out is there, and if it dies while you're flying downwind, have fun running like 30, 40 miles an hour, come to a stop, you've got a flat tap, you can just use those skids and you'll be chilling. But... It's still not desirable. I don't suggest it. Like right now, all right? I have flying downwind. Motor dies. Oh shoot, what do I do? Okay, pick my spot. It's right there. I'm bringing it in for a nice smooth touchdown right on my desired location. See? But let's pretend that I'm flying low off the ground. 
downwind. Super fun, because you're cruising extremely fast, up to like 50, 60 miles an hour, depending on if your trim's up, what size what. Motor dies, uh, I can't turn around. I can't make that 180 turn into the wind. So now I have to land down freaking wind. If you ever try to land down wind, you're gonna realize why that ain't smart, boys. Wanna see what happens when a collapse happens? Woo! That was a collapse. You can't see it, but that was a collapse. Woo. No big deal. Ready, 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 ready. Woo. No big deal. Okay, now with the current weather conditions, this is gonna be a very spicy landing, let me tell ya. Cause I'm gonna have to bring it in right here, hook it right over this tree, and set it down in this field. Oh my gosh, I have pulled it off flawlessly. That was absolutely spectacular. And voila. Thank you. <laughs> that was a very solid 30 minute flight there. I'm sure my hair looks great. Uh, the weather conditions were absolutely gnarly, which is why I kept it short. But I hope you guys liked this video. I was just talking briefly about uh, what to do if your motor dies, what happens if your motor dies. You'd be surprised how many people I talk to on like a daily basis that ask me what happens if the motor dies in flight. The, the glider's already open, I promise. I promise, it's gonna be okay. The glider's already open. Um, and no, it doesn't just disable and detach from you when it, the glider or when the motor dies. But that was cool. You guys could see like the wind is blowing behind me. Uh, it was gnarly conditions up there. After I cracked that Red Bull, a second into it, all of a sudden I got freaking slammed with like a giant downdraft or something. And I was like, well, this is gonna be exciting because I didn't want to drop it. I spent good money for that bad boy. Also, it was really good. I don't want to drop that. But yeah, you guys can see here, got the trusty old flat top 200R there. We're running the four blade, not the two blade, the four blade E-prop. Absolutely love the four blade E-prop. Produces more power, only weighs one pound more than the two prop or the two blade which means the spin up time isn't that much slower it's a little bit slower since it's one pound heavier but it's not that much slower of a spin up time which the nice thing with like the two blade man you hammer down if you're doing like a lot of foot drags or whatever you hammer down and it just revs right up this pretty much does too it just produces just a little bit more power i think we thrust tested it and it produced 10 pounds more thrust on our thruster here i don't remember the exact numbers i just remember it was 10 pounds more thrust than the two blade. If you guys want to learn more about that paramotor over there and what makes it the world's safest paramotor without a doubt, if you're looking to get into this sport, you're looking for a safe paramotor and a paraglider, that setup right there is without a doubt the best one you can get. If you want to learn more, call us 800-707-2525. Speak directly with someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Uh, you will be talking with me, thank you. Or go to flyflattop.com. Uh, check out what's on that website, fill out the form on the website, a bunch of information will be emailed over to you, and you'll receive a phone call from me. So, thank you guys for watching, like this video if you liked it, dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below what you want to see in the next video. I want to be doing some more flying videos, but Utah's weather hasn't been great, so work with me on that. Anyways, enough of my beautiful hair and ranting on, I'll see you guys next time.